Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, let's start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekar Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone of the Will, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Abba Ba. Back at it with another lesson in the spirit of power, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Lord, where the video is edifying. And we're really just going to flow through the spirit, you know, without further ado, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, and matter of fact, let's go ahead and let's start off with this scripture right here. All right, let's go with Romans 13 and 11. Whoever got it can read it. All right, this is uh, Romans 13, chapter 13, verse 11, and it reads, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of, out of sleep, for now is our... Falafel, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Yeah, so now is high time to rise out of sleep, man. All right, and think about it. The Apostle Paul wrote this a couple thousand years ago, all right, if you will, or let's just say, to be safe, a couple hundred years ago, if you will. But nevertheless, how much more now in these present times, man? They got the chip, they got the Maxine, okay? They got the uproars of the people, earthquakes in diverse places, all these different prophecies that Yahweh Shah was talking about uh, back then with his disciples are coming to pass right before your very eyes, man. You're hearing the rumors of war, so on and so forth. Yeah. All right, America, um, I think what? America just sent a ship over somewhere in the Middle East to like send a message out to Iran. America and Israel had something to do with that, to send a message out to Iran. All right, which Iran, you're known as the Persians in scriptures, all right? And you come from the uh, nation of Elam, all right? The, you know, but nevertheless, you know, you devils, okay? Because Y'all some devils too. All right, you're going to shoot missiles upon Babylon. All right, yeah. along with these other nations as well, man. All right, and, and uh, the land of Israel is going to get bombed with missiles too, man. Right. All right, because that's the will of the Lord. All right, but nevertheless, you know, so we got to wake up, man, because it's high time. You know, and you're starting to see that the Lord is starting to add different souls to the church. You know, all these different people are starting to wake up to the fact that they're Hebrew Israelites, so on and so forth, man. And you see dudes who even knew they were Hebrew Israelites. You see them trying to slither their way back in the fold, man. Right. All right, because they see that the end is not. Right. You know, brothers got anything? You know, they see these prophecy. You know, they showing this stuff, so they trying to, you know, get back right. Con, huh. exactly. Con, con, like, 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 uh, like Ottawa said, they're trying to slither their way back in. You know, a lot of fallouts is trying to, you know, come back into the truth. All right, because you know. It fell out either, you know, for whatever reason they had, and then they they, they noticed like, ah, oh, shit, like they fucked up, and they're like, now they try to come back in, the, come back into this thing. All right. Yeah, and actually, I got this precept. It's Matthew twenty-five. We're gonna start from the top. Are you when y'all mind reading it, Papa Sean? You know, Matthew twenty-five. All right, and we could just start from verse one, cause that's cause you you do you fell out. Yeah. Whoever, whoever. Uh, this is uh, where did it go? I just oh, Sinatra. This is a uh, Matthew the twenty-fifth chapter, starting at verse one. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten, ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. Yeah, so those ten virgins ultimately represent the the, uh, the nation of Israel, if you will, or the men of Israel who. You know, have been received this truth, if you will. The five were wise, which is the ones who received this truth, and they held firm to the truth. They did what's pleasing unto the Lord. All right, they maintained those patterns of good works. Okay, and then the five uh, foolish virgins are the ones who had the truth but spent it foolishly, if you will, because uh -huh. this truth is like money, so to speak. And what we are supposed to do is we're supposed to multiply the talents the Lord gave us. All right, we're supposed to increase the riches that the Lord gave us. You know. Lord invested in us. Now we have to show him why his investment was a good investment. Man. Mm. Hey, Bible show. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Right. So, Bible show. Can you get Proverbs twenty-one and verse twenty? All right, because the oil is the wisdom. All right. So you had the lamp, because the lamp is ultimately this word, this doctrine, the scriptures. You know, you had the lamp, but you didn't have the wisdom to apply it. All right, because what's the point of having the lamp? You know, and burning the wick of the candle, if you will, or burning the wick of the lamp with no oil to sustain it. You know, so the wick is going to burn, but it's going to burn out quickly, you know, because uh -huh. there's no oil to sustain it. So go ahead, Bob Chuck. 
this is a proverb chapter uh, 21 verse 20 and it reads there is a treasure to be desired in oil and dwelling of the wise yeah there's a treasure to be desired in oil and dwelling of the wise and we're seeing now much more in these last days how the word of the lord is truly being desired and how much more when the famine of the word hits man yeah. all right because you know hey the famine of the word is nigh it's pretty much here you know but it's going to be it's going to be in its full effect uh, um you know as the days go on man because we still have the opportunity to go on youtube you know get look at videos and stuff like that watch lessons but there's going to come a point in time where esau he cuts all of that off man um, okay and uh matter of fact this is uh it's a lot here but yeah so you know the family word is 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 right in front of your faces is it's around the corner because you know brothers pages is already getting striped down Brothers are, are having to make two, three pages a week just yep. to keep their videos going, do, keep doing their daily lessons. All right, and that's just letting you know that you know these devils, they 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 see what's going on. They see this true thing. You know they're trying they're trying to put a stop to it. But yep. ultimately, it's 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 the it's, it's the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and when that feminine word comes, then you know at that time when we're searching for answers, it's gonna be too late. That's right. And matter of fact, so let's go ahead and keep back on uh, Matthew twenty five, Bible Stone. This is uh, Matthew twenty five. Uh, verse 5. I'll start at verse 4 again. Actually, verse 3. Verse 4. That's fine. Okay, verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Right. Okay, the wise virgins. You know, Lord willing, we be those men. All right, the elect, ultimately. Huh. They're going to be the ones to move wisely with this truth. They're not going to just look at this truth as something that is not and what i mean by that is they're not they're going to understand the value and the importance and appreciate this knowledge man all right and they're going to make their best out of it what they have you know according to the lot that the lord gave them uh, okay <laughs> while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept all right and that's ultimately going into how there was a falling away of the nation of israel okay like it tells jeremiah 17 even thou shalt discontinue from thy heritage also uh in the second Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul said that the end shall not come until there come a great falling away. All right, the Lord said we became dry bones. Revelation 11, you know, the Lord said, um, the church talked about how our dead bodies were lying in the great, uh, in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, so on and so forth. So ultimately, the, the bridegroom tearing is Yahweh Shai going to the spirit realm, doing what he's doing in the spirit realm, and then the nation of Israel as a whole fell away from following after Yahweh Shai. And that was roughly about a 350 year uh, period, time frame, you know? So basically from around 1619, 1620 to about the late 60s, early 70s, where you had Abba Bibbins come on the scene, who, which we believe through the spirit is uh, Elijah, the, Elijah the prophet in the reincarnation, John the Baptist in the reincarnation. Yahweh Shai himself believed that Elijah was John the Baptist. And through the spirit, we believe Abba Bibbins is Elijah in the reincarnation. And it only makes sense because the Lord said, matter of fact, let's get it. Baba Kishar, can you get Malachi 4, Baba Kishar? And get uh, Matthew um, 17, Baba Kishar. Uh -huh. Behold, Matthew 25. Uh -huh. Malachi 4, you can start at, uh, you can really start, read the whole chapter on Malachi 4. Let me breeze through it. Because we just flowing through the Spirit, you know. Covered the prophesy, if you will, man. Last page. Four. Yeah, you can start from the top. All right, this is Malachi chapter four, verse one, and it reads: For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yeah, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Yeah, talk about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord's destruction is going to burn as an oven. Why? Because the nuclear missiles and from the laser beams from the chariots, man. It all says, right. and all the proud shall be as stubble, meaning you're going to get burnt up by that flame. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, Shalom. And, and, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Yeah, because the Lord's going to destroy their society. Man. Go ahead, Bob Shah. Verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Yeah, that son of righteousness represents Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming back with healing in his wings. And why is Yahweh Shai known as the son of righteousness? Because the scriptures say how Yahweh Shai is the light of the world. What's ultimately, what's the greater light of the world? The sun, right. you know? And when you read Wisdom of Solomon, you read Wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter, 
It talks about, therefore, the sun uh, uh, hath not shined upon us, roughly paraphrasing. You know, the, but Yahweh he represents that son of righteousness, just to put it to you shortly. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Right. Go ahead, Bible Show. Verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet mm -hmm. in the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. Yeah, the elect are going to tread down the wicked, man. And they're going to enslave you devils too. You know, you devils are going into slavery. All right, you elite. Okay, all you're going to be tread down, man. And brothers are going to get spiritual power. Some brothers are going to get spiritual power on this side, man. Paul, all right, go ahead, Bible Show. Verse 4, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Yeah, so that's what we need to do. Remember the ways of the Lord. Remember these scriptures. Remember his commandments, so on and so forth. Verse 5, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshah. Yeah, and we see that day coming nigh. That's why we're, you know, the Lord has set us up to warn the people because we see that day coming nigh, man. The chip is already here. The Maxine is already here. You know, martial law troops is, is uh, waiting to be deployed. You know, so on and so forth. Uproars of the people, earthquakes in diverse places. All these prophecies are right before our very face. 2020 is truly uh, the year of prophecy, man. Right. You know, all these prophecies are here, and this is about to be like a domino effect, one after another, one after another, one after another, to the point it's just gonna be smacking the face so hard you can't even, you don't even know what to do. Shot. I'm like, how about you, Shot? It's gonna be smacking these two third jakes by the face so hard, you're not gonna know what to do. All right, unless you come back to how about you, Shot? Repent, but you know, these prophecies are gonna be coming so crazy at you. The beast, the, the mark of the beast is coming. The the martial law, this Maxine that they're pushing out. All these things is, is about to hit like a domino effect. Right. We got a precept. Uh, uh, Matthew. This is uh, Matthew uh, chapter 24, verse 13. And it reads, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom. Salakia. Salakia. I just want to touch on that real quick. That's important, man. It may seem like a simple scripture, but that's truly important. Y'all should I said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the prophecies of this book. Um, hey, man. You see how prophecy come back into full? But hey, what does it say? He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. You got to endure in this thing, man. You can't just come in this troop and do what you want to do. It don't work like that, man. Right. You do what Yahweh Bashem Shai has instructed you to do through his men, which he has set up in the spirit, okay? And you just wait for the Lord. That's right. That's all it is. That's right. It's like your pops tell you, I'm coming to pick you up in about an hour. Be ready. At the, be ready. You know? Wait, man. Don't be trying to fucking go off, go get water. No, he said he coming, man. All right? And if he comes and your ass ain't there, it's going to be a problem, man. Um, I, got a, I got another precept go ahead, to huh? go on with uh, Yohan Son. This is uh, Hebrews 6 and 11. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Yeah. You feel me? So, you know, we, we got we to gotta be in this until the end. We got to endure it to the end. All right? Yep. Like think of this like a race and track. <laughs> I used to run track when I was like, so think of it like a race. You gotta you gotta finish the race until the end, no matter even if you're in last place, you gotta finish that race. Right. You can't quit. Right. You can't right. quit or else you be disqualified. Alright. You don't wanna be disqualified by your Shah. Mm -hmm. Alright, you wanna finish that race. You wanna get there and, and endure until the end. It's time. You got that. Oh, uh, let me keep going. Uh, uh, four, uh, verse fourteen and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right. And that's what you're seeing. This gospel is going across the four corners of the globe. All right? Through the spirit of power, Yahweh Shah. That's right. All right? Through his men, which he has set up in the spirit, pushing this word amongst the four corners, man. All right? Yeah, you man. got so like yeah, so yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, just saying, like, <laughs> like the brother said, you know, you got to wait for Yahweh Shah to come. You know, you got to keep doing this work. You know, keep going on the highways and byways. You know, keep feeding the sheep. You gotta do these things. Yep. You know, you can't, uh, you know, uh, go straight to your own, you know, understanding. You gotta do what the, you know, what the, pro uh, what the, you know, what the true men of the Lord are doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord, lean on your own understanding. Right. right. Um, you go back on that mountain side real quick. Uh, go back All right. Uh, yeah. Verse six, and it says. 
and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse yeah so ultimately through Elijah the prophet Abba Bibbing being set up he turned the heart of the fathers to the children the fathers represented those high priests back there the, the high priests that were our apostles elders you know high priest uh, Yaiquab high priest King Masha you know which we believe is King David in the reincarnation you know our, our high priest Ariel so on and so forth man okay those are the fathers that turned the heart to the children and who were the children the, the nation of Israel you know starting first and foremost with the elect and as you see the children they're turning back to their their spiritual fathers if you will man okay right. and um, uh, like it says lest I come and smite the earth with a curse and so when you go back to uh, Matthew 17, my shot, which I had the brother hold Come on, I got it. Right. Because he said he's going to send Elijah before the great dreadful day of the Lord, man. And the right. great dreadful day of the Lord hasn't come yet because we're still here in Babylon. The scripture right. say, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, man. Right. You know? <laughs> Literally. Okay? Right. Yeah, you got it. Matthew 17, what? Um, start at, uh, you can really start from the top. But just try to breeze through it by yourself. Because the re only reason I'm having you start from the top is because it's going to bounce off what we just read in Malachi real quick. Come on. Uh, Matthew 17, verse 1. And after six days, y'all were shot, taking Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringing them up, to, bringing them up into a high mountain apart. And that's, and that's low-key spiritual, too, because certain things with certain brothers, you know, you... You know, you deal with certain brothers differently than how you deal with other brothers, man, because certain brothers is on different levels in the spirit, you know. So right. Yahweh Shai, he had some brothers that were closer to him, that he would show them stuff, you know, to them. But he had some brothers, you know, that, you know, dealing on the base level, if you will, which there's really no low level in this truth, but there's an entry level, if you will. Uh -huh. All right, go ahead. Verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, and his raiment, was white as the light. So that's the point that I wanted to get. The son of righteousness. It says he transfigured before them, meaning what? He was he 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 glowed up. Literally. You know? Not like how Eve be saying it. He glowed up. Like how the uh, Super Saiyans be doing it. You know? That's where they get that idea from. From the scripture. It says he transfigured before them and his face was as bright as the sun. He is the son of righteousness. Yahweh Shai is the light of the world. He also said that whosoever will follow me follows me shall never be in darkness. Rough paraphrase. All right, but uh, whenever the brother's ready, you know, we can get that next scripture. Verse 3. Come, Baba Kasha. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Right, Moses and Elias, which Elias is just uh, a way, way of saying Elijah, okay? So <clears throat> basically that hologram technology appeared before Yahweh Shai, the Moses and Elijah, right? Then this is all to get the context of the scripture. Go ahead, Baba Kasha. Because they were expecting... Elijah the prophet to come, you know, which he did. He came twice, technically. You know, he came as John the Baptist, and he came as Abba Bibi. Go ahead, Baba Shah. Come on, verse 4. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahweh Shah, Lord, it is, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Yep. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Yeah, and that goes to show you Yahweh Shai was Solomon. <clears throat> because Yahweh Shai, he's known as the Lord's beloved son. All right? And uh, a nickname for that they gave Solomon was uh, Jedediah. You know, roughly paraphrasing, which means beloved of the Most High. You know, or beloved of Yahweh, roughly paraphrasing. So that's how you know Yahweh Shai was uh, Solomon. But also, that's how you know the Most High had a son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that bright cloud represented a chariot that came over them and was speaking to them with that loud speaker system that the chariots had. Go ahead, Bob Trump. Verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Yeah, because they heard the glory of the voice of the Lord. And Yahweh Shah came and touched. Somebody said, yeah. Come yeah. On. And Yahweh Shah came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, oh, their eyes, they saw no man save Yahweh Shai only. Right. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahweh Shai charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the sons of man be risen again from the dead. Yeah, so here it is. Yahweh Shai is telling them, Listen, don't tell anybody about that until I rise up from the grave. You know? Go ahead, Dr. Shai. And his disciples asked him, saying, 
why they say the scribes that Elias must first come. Yeah, because they were expecting the reincarnation of Elijah. That's why when John the Baptist came on the scene, which is spiritual, they asked him if he was Elijah, but the scriptures say there's no remembrance of former things. So the Lord took that from his memory that he was Elijah uh, in the reincarnation. Come on. Go ahead. Verse 11. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Eli Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not. Yep. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Yep, Khan. So he said Elijah came already. Meaning what? He came as John the Baptist. But he came again, all right, <clears throat> as Abba Bibbin. All right. Go ahead, verse 13. Verse 13, and the disciples understood that he spake unto them of, the, of John the Baptist, and when they that's were the point. con. So that's the point on that right there. So like the Lord said, I was sent Elijah for the great and dreadful day of the Lord, man. And here it is, the dreadful day of the Lord is near, and it hasteth greatly, man. All right? <clears throat> but that's how you know that they believed in reincarnation back then. For all you dudes who can't receive reincarnation. Oh, Yahweh Shai believed in reincarnation. Because they said the disciples understood that he was speaking about John the Baptist. You know, also when you read in the book of Luke, the angel told, told uh, John the Baptist, I believe his father, that he would come in the spirit of Elijah. <laughs> so that's telling you right there that this is Elijah coming back. And he came back again as Abba Bibbins. And one thing spiritually too, that the apostles, um, I remember, I believe it was Apostle Sahar, he said it in one of their camp videos. He said, that, uh, I believe, you know, I don't want to misquote the apostle, but I'm trying to remember as best as I can. But they were at some type of feast. I'm not sure. I believe it was the Passover. I'm not sure. But they were at some type of feast. And they said how Abba Bivens was uh, eating uh, locusts. You know? And that's, and that's something that John the Baptist did in the wilderness. He was eating locusts and honey. Going to show you that that's the same spirit coming back. You know? Uh -huh. If you can receive it. Because not everybody can receive reincarnation. And Yahweh Shai even said that in uh, Matthew 11. When he spoke about John the Baptist being Elijah in the reincarnation. He said, if you can receive it, this was Elijah, which was to come. Russell paraphrase. Nevertheless, we can go back to Matthew 25. So far, God. And the reason why we brought up, you know, John the Baptist through the Spirit is because the bride, like verse 5, where it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. All right? But in verse 6 is going to tell you. Go ahead. Verse 6, and at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Right, at midnight, meaning Esau's final moments of his kingdom, the Lord raised up Abba Bivens, you know, who was that cry saying the bridegroom's coming, meaning that he was heralding in Yahweh Shai's coming return, just like how he did when he was John the Baptist. You know, and through Abba Bivens, we have the doctrine that we have today. You know, now the doctrine is a little tweaked. You know, they have a little tweaks here and there in the doctrine, but it's pretty much the same foundation, if you will. You know, the 12 tribes chart with the children of Israel, so on and so forth, man. All right, the breakdown, so on and so forth. Go ahead, Baba Kishaw. Come on. Verse 7. Then all those lewd, so like it, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Yeah, so the five wise and the five foolish, they're trying to trim their lamps. So here it is the time now when the Lord is coming back. We're, we're trimming our lamps. We're, we're, we're preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Matter of fact, when you read um, Luke, man, I love this scripture right here too because... You know, it, it puts you it puts you in that mind frame that Yahweh Shai was, you know, he had his disciples in. This is Luke 12, starting at verse, um, <clears throat> I'll start at verse um, 29. It says, And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. And the reason why I read this is because Jacob's trouble is approaching. And you might go a day without eating. You might go a day without drinking. All right, but don't worry about that. Because why? Don't be doubtful. You know, because the Lord, he's going to take care of his elect. Lord willing, we be, be those men. He feeds the rabbits. You know, the, he feeds the birds. You know, so on and so forth, man. They don't clock in the 9 to 5 for Esau, but yet the Lord still feeds them. So how much more his men who, who serve him? Okay. Verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of Yahweh Bashmael Shai, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 32. Fear not, little flocks, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that fails not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted. All right? It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And our treasure is on the kingdom. That's why our minds are constantly on the kingdom and things of the spirit, you know? Right. 
uh, verse 35. Here's the point. Let your loins be girded about, meaning gird up your loins. Get your mind right, you know. Prepare yourself for war, for battle, because this is a spiritual war, but it's going to transpire into the physical, man. And you can actually read about that in 2nd Ezra 13. The scriptures talk about how one, one people against another, one nation against another, one realm against another. Right now, it's a spiritual warfare. We're, we're going against spiritual wickedness in high places, like you elite, so on and so forth. You know, it's, it's, it's really us versus them, you know, through the spirit of Har Yabash Shah. Because they have their priesthood on the left-hand side. They send up enchantments. They send up curses on us. You know, they send up, uh, uh, try to throw up witchcrafts on us. But the scriptures say there's no enchantment on Jacob. Right. You know, so all that stuff is to no avail. All right? Uh -huh. But we send up curses on them, too. You know? But our curses actually matter. Right. Yep. But nevertheless, it says, let your loins be girded about, meaning prepare your mind, gird up your loins. You know, like like they say, uh, um, what they say in the world? They say, you know, uh, tuck in your belt or, or you know, tighten your belt up, whatever the case may strap be. Strap your boots. Yep, strap your boots, pretty much. It's like, that's basically what it means. Let your loins be girded about. Because loin, when you, when in the ancient world, you had men, they wore garments. Just like how we're wearing garments, they had men wearing garments. And when you gird up your loins, ultimately, that's you taking your garment and, like, wrapping it up together. You know what I'm saying? That's your loins being girded. So, basically, they did that to prepare for war. All right? It says, and your light burning your lights burning that's the reason why i wanted to bring the scripture verse 36 and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord going back to what waiting on upon yahweh shai unto the end it says <clears throat> and that when he cometh and knocketh they may open unto him immediately and we're going to read about that in matthew 25 verse 37 blessed are those servants whom the lord when he cometh shall find watching meaning you're watching you're being a watchman. You're watching after the flock. You're watching after the prophecy. You know, it says, "Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He cometh, shall find watching." Verily I say unto you, that He shall gird Himself and make them to sit down to meet, which represents uh, symbolically of the kingdom, and will come forth and serve them. All right, and that's the point on that right there. All right. And it says, verse 38, and, and if He come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. Meaning, ultimately, when the Lord, the Lord is always watching. You know, so if the Lord is always watching, he still sees you watching, still on your purpose, spiritually, blessed are those servants, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, we can go back to Matthew 25. <clears throat> this is uh, Matthew 25, verse 9. Actually, no. Verse 8. Matthew 25, verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Right, because they had no oil to sustain their lamps. Why? Because they spent it up, going back to Proverbs 21. But the wise answers... So that ultimately, come, sorry, like so I get, uh, that ultimately represents you dudes who fell out the faith. You know, you wanted to go do your own thing. Da -da -da -da. Vibe wasn't right, quote unquote. <laughs> that shit's through. That's, that's for you guys, man. Lest you repent. And Lord willing, you do, you know, because at the end of the day, man, we, we, Jake is a compassionate people, truly. We want to see Israel make it. You know, right. But we understand that not all Israel is going to make it because it's written. Because right. not all Israel is, is, is worthy of making it. Don't get me wrong. I speak for myself. I know I'm not worthy of salvation. I fell short of the glory of Yahweh Shemel Shai plenty of times. You know? Shit, today I fell short of the glory of the Lord. You know? We, we, you know what I'm saying? We all have fallen short of the glory. However, you know, it's just the mindset. You know, Jake don't want to repent. You know what I'm saying? That's what I really mean when I say Jake ain't worthy. Because they don't want to repent, man. You know, the elect, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. They want to get right with Yahweh Shemel Shai. Two-thirds, they still want to do what the fuck they want to do. And that's why they're going to be destroyed for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bible uh, verse, uh, verse 9. But the wise answer saying, not so, lest there, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Right, so basically the wise is like, where the hell you was at when, when where, you wasn't with me when we were shooting in the gym? Hmm. You know, that's basically what the wise is saying. Like, hold up, you, you the same one who wanted to fall out, do what you wanted to do. Now you want to come back around and slither your way back into the fold? You know, not so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. But that's pretty much the point. Um, you can keep reading and we'll close off in Matthew 25. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they... And they that were ready went and with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Meaning that they got beamed up, you know? That's why Yahweh said that 
when the bridegroom knocketh, immediately they may open unto him, like we just read in Luke. Go ahead, Father Scott. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. That's right. That's like Moses. Not Moses. That's like Noah. Noah Noah's yeah. ark. Hey, the Yahweh Shai said, As in the days of Noah, so shall be the days of the Son of Man. Come. Right. Go ahead, Bible Shai. Verse, uh, verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. That's right. So that's why we got to be on our P's and Q's and we got to be on our purpose spiritually because we don't know when the Lord is coming back. You know, we understand we can measure the time with the prophecies, but we don't know that exact date. So we want to make sure that leading up to that exact date, we're on point spiritually, man. Your brother got anything else? Oh, that's really the point. You know, it's just a little thing flowing through the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, just get right. Repent while you still have opportunity, man. Right. Okay. Matter of fact, Bible show, can you get Isaiah 55? We can close out with that. So while you still have opportunity, and then you get it's like your uh, Sirach okay. 5, Bible show. Sirach 5, uh, you know. And the scripture is going to speak for himself. Which uh, verse you want to read? 5 or 6. Uh, Alright, Isaiah 55, seven. verse 6, and it reads Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him not return unto the Lord. And how about let him return. To Lachim. And let him return unto the Lord. And how about Shemel Shah. And he will have mercy upon him. And to our power. For, for he will abundantly pardon. Right. You got the scripture on here? Calm. This is Sirach 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn. Give me one. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord and to put not off from the day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in, in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Yep. You got that. That's right. Like, like the brother said, just read, you know, repent and seek the Lord while he's still, you know, while he's still found right now. Right. Well, with that being said, we want to close this video by giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Rakakadash. Want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of great Muslim that were well, and peace, blessings, and salutations to the elect scattered abroad. Uh, with that being said, Shalom. 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 Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba.